It's been a long time coming, but it's finally here, the Microsoft Elite Controller Series 2. The Microsoft Elite Controller came out in October 2015. It was by no means the original Pro Controller, but it certainly helped bring Pro Controllers to the masses of Xbox gamers. Now, exactly four years later, the Series 2 arrives to bring some welcome changes to Microsoft's finest piece of equipment. Again, some of the changes bought are things that have been seen already from the likes of Scuff. Microsoft, however, brings us the more premium take on Pro Controllers. In this video, I'm going to run through what's new with the Elite Series 2 and give you my view on whether or not Microsoft have done it again. This review will be broken down into the following sections. Number one, features. Number two, design and style. Number three, customization. Number four, price. Number five, using the controller. And number six, overall summary. Okay, in the words of Microsoft themselves, let's jump in. The Series 2 gives us everything that the first Elite gave us and more. Here is a look at the features list. First up, hair triggers. The Elite gave us hair triggers and they were great. Hair triggers allow you to shorten the distance of the trigger pull so that you can squeeze fully and release faster, allowing for rapid fire. The Series 2 has hair triggers too, but now we have extra levels of hairiness. The hair trigger switch for each trigger has three settings. Normal range of pull, medium range of pull, which is similar to the Elite hair trigger, and the short range of pull. Short is very short and means you can only pull the trigger maybe two to three millimeters. Rear paddles. Exactly the same as the Elite, the Series 2 remappable paddles are attached and detached using magnets and they sit in the exact same position at the lower portion of the controller nestled under the grips. These paddles can be remapped to perform the function of almost any other button on the Elite Series 2, even thumbstick directional presses. I'll cover that in the customization section, but Microsoft have made huge advancements in this area. Interchangeable thumbsticks and D-pad. Now again, Microsoft allow you to swap out the thumbsticks and D-pad on the Series 2. Using a magnet system, you can easily remove the sticks and D-pad, swapping them out with other components. With the Series 2, you get a standard D-pad and circle D-pad. What's new here is the thumbsticks. With the Series 2, you get two standard height concave sticks, one standard height dome stick, one tall concave stick, and two standard height wider head sticks. And it's these wider heads that we have not seen before. I know a lot of people like using control freaks to make the default sticks wider. No more is this needed with the Elite Series 2. Adjustable tension thumbsticks. New to the Elite, you can now adjust the tension of each thumbstick using the thumbstick tension adjustment tool. I don't know if it's called that, but that's just what I'm going with. There are three levels of tension, light, medium, and heavy. Adjustment is very quick and simple to perform, and it allows you to tailor just how much effort is needed to move the stick. Profile storage. The Elite allowed you to set up custom controller configurations such as button remapping, vibration levels, thumbstick curves, and more, and save two of them to the controller. The Series 2 allows you to save three profiles and allows you to disable the profiles completely, leaving you with a default setup. This means the Series 2 actually stores four different controller configurations. USB-C connectivity. Coming into modern times, the Series 2 now adopts USB-C standard, allowing for a larger data transfer rate and increased compatibility. Bluetooth. Now, a lot of people want Bluetooth in their controllers. Well, now they can have it. Using Bluetooth, you can connect to your Xbox or Windows PC, and this will be very important for Project Scarlet, I am told. Integrated battery. I have never had an issue with removable batteries in the Elite, but a lot of people laugh at it. The Series 2 not only comes with an integrated battery, but a charging dock is built into the controller case. You can use the dock out of the case, or just put your controller away in the case and it will charge up while you sleep, which is awesome. Apparently this thing holds 40 hours of gameplay inside it, so you should never run out of juice in the middle of a game. The Elite has not drastically changed in terms of design with the Series 2. There are some key things to look at here though. The Elite had an issue with the rubber grips peeling off after a lot of sweaty use. The Series 2 features wraparound grips. Now, when I first saw this and heard about it, I was concerned by this, but getting hands-on with the controller, the grips don't actually seem to be a rubber attachment on the shell. The grip looks and feels more like it's actually the way the grip handles themselves are molded, and I can't see these being possible to peel. It doesn't look as pretty as the Elite on the faceplate due to the grip texture, but I can live with that. The detachable parts have had a facelift, and now are a nice dark grey looking material, or in the case of the thumbsticks, a shiny glossy dark mirror look, rather than the cheaper aluminium look of the original Elite. 
I mean, the original parts still looked great, but Microsoft have really stepped up the game with the looks of the paddles, D-pads, and especially the shiny thumbstick components. Overall, grips aside, the controller looks great and certainly continues the premium look and feel. Again though, just like the Elite, this is a heavy controller which weighs in at 345 grams, give or take about 15 grams depending on what you have attached. If you have noodle arms, you may struggle to lift this. Here's the big one. The original Elite was very customizable. The Series 2 ramps up the customization options big time. All of the Series 1 options remain, but there are more, some of which I've covered in the features list already. You know about the head triggers, adjustable thumbstick tension, and swappable thumbsticks for example. In this section, I'm going to focus on the detail behind customizing the rear paddles. What can they do with the same four paddles to improve them? Well, Microsoft know the answer to the question. Firstly, you can map even more on the Series 2 than you could on the Series 1 and probably any other controller out there. You can now use the Microsoft Accessories app to map the paddles and any other button to every action that the controller has a dedicated button for. Want a paddle to be mapped to pushing up on the right stick? You got it. Want to set a paddle to perform the action of the view button? Weird, but you can do it. Not only can you map any action button to paddles or other buttons, but you can map functions like recording a clip. This is a great new addition for those who don't really need to map face buttons, but may want a quick way to clip an awesome kill or perform other Xbox quick functions. If that's not enough for you, well, it doesn't stop there. You can now set any button to be a shift key. What this does is make all other buttons perform a secondary function whilst it is active. For example, you could have the primary function of your right trigger fire a weapon. You could map the secondary function to reload. So when you're done firing, Press the button configured as shift, which is most likely to be a paddle, plus the right trigger again and instead of shooting, you will reload. Now that's quite a basic example. The power of this comes in when you want to have a number of different remaps. Four paddles can perform eight actions, for example. You can just stack up button mappings in an almost unlimited way. You, you really need to try it to, to get a grip of just how powerful this could be. Just like the Series 1, you can also adjust thumbstick curves. The options are the same here, but there are new ways of applying the curve. Originally you had radial, but now you have radial, independent axis, and true diagonals. What they do is currently shown on the screen. There's even more though. You can adjust a secondary curve that activates when you press shift. Have an aggressive curve as your primary function for quick flicks, and set the secondary function to something slower for fine adjustments and holding angles. The classic changes are back too, allowing you to adjust the dead zones on the triggers, rumble strength for each trigger, and grip independently, and even the brightness of the Xbox button. Create all the profiles you want, name them, and save up to three of them on the controller. When you add in multiple thumbsticks, three levels of thumbstick tension, and three levels of trigger pull ranges, this is without doubt the most customizable controller that money can buy. Well, I haven't checked them all, but I struggle to think of anything that does more without being classed as a modded controller that includes macros, etc. Please note that these are illegal in competitive play, an Elite controller is not. The original Elite, for a while now, has been priced at around £110 to £120, making it pretty much the cheapest Pro Controller out, and in my opinion, it was the best Pro Controller. Being the best and cheapest is absolutely huge. The Series 2, however, comes in at £159. That's an increase of about £50, or 50% 50 above the previous iteration. This does bring it into line with most other Pro Controllers, such as the Razer Wolverine Ultimate and the Scuf Prestige. Comparison videos to come in the future so you know for sure what is the best. Until I do the comparison video, I'm not going to look at whether or not the Series 2 is the best value on the market. The question is though, is it £50 better than a Series 1? We'll get to that later in the video. This is what's important. What is it like to use the Series 2? The most obvious thing is the grips. We now have wraparound grips and you can feel it under the ball of your thumbs now. It actually feels pretty good. There is a smooth feel to it. It's textured and you can feel the grip, but there is something smooth about it that means it's not uncomfortable under the skin. After hours of use, it still feels really comfy to hold. Another difference on use is in the paddles. They are a bit smaller than before, they don't seem as easy to press as the Elite paddles, and they are maybe a little stiffer. 
This is good though, as the original pedals could be a little too easy to press, which was very common feedback. The extra hairy triggers are interesting. The shortest setting may be a little too short. I mean, it works, but it pretty much turns the trigger into a button, and sometimes it feels a little too short. For me, I am using the right trigger on maximum hairy setting and the left trigger on medium. I just found that with the hair triggers off, pulling the trigger fully presses my fingertip into the plastic housing, which is uncomfortable. That's probably more just the way I hold the controller though. When it comes to using other sticks, I enjoyed using the wider sticks for a little while. I started to feel like they were uncomfortable when pushing a direction for a lengthy period of time though, so I have gone back to the standard sticks. The best bit of using the Elite Series 2, for me, is still the paddles. Adding in the ability to assign a shift key and double up on remapping options is just next level in this area. Not just for the paddles, but to assign secondary functions to any button is genius, and it just adds so much more control. You can configure whatever you want, and making moves in a game makes you feel even more godlike. It sounds crazy, but it's absolutely true. Overall, I love the Elite Series 2. The Series 1 was my favourite controller, and this one is better in many ways. Having a Series 2, I would unlikely use a Series 1 again. If you are on a budget, the Series 1 makes loads of sense. If you can afford to drop the extra money, then you should definitely go for the Series 2, as it does make your life a bit easier, mainly due to the charging case, Bluetooth and future compatibility, as well as giving you that extra control with the hair triggers, remappable buttons and thumbstick tension adjustment. Coming soon, there will of course be an Elite Series 2 versus Elite Series 1 video, um, probably an Elite Series 2 versus a Scuf Prestige, and maybe even an Elite Series 2 versus Razer Wolverine controller comparison. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more.